Good morning and welcome to Rahel Baptist Church for Sunday morning, November 11th, 2018. This morning's message brought to us by Senior Pastor Michael Franklin is entitled, The Gift of Peace. If you ever have your Bibles, turn to John 14 with me if you would. John chapter 14, we are in a series uh, of John. We are preaching word by word through the book of John. Uh, I have preached, if you don't know, over 30 sermons now. I counted them this week. I believe 31 sermons on the book of John. And we will do it this week. Next week, we're going to have our uh, Thanksgiving celebration. All right, so I'll go back to uh, more of a topical. And then I'm going to get one more John in the second week or the second of December we'll get one in and then of course the rest of December we'll talk about Christmas all right so uh in John chapter 14 uh I want to give you the outline to the message today number one the Holy Spirit teaches us peace the Holy Spirit teaches us peace number two Jesus gives us peace Jesus gives us peace And number three, God's formula for true peace. There is a formula in the Word of God, and we're going to share those Scripture with you today about true peace in our lives. In John 14, Jesus spends much time reassuring His disciples that everything was going to be all right. Things were about to get very serious. There would be an arrest, there would be a beating, and Jesus' death. In our text, Jesus teaches His disciples the importance of having peace in their lives. The Jewish word for peace was shalom, which meant wholeness, completeness, health, security, and contentment. Jesus had told the disciples many times before not to be afraid, but their faith would be strongly uh, tested very soon. Jesus said we can have true peace in our lives when the whole world is in turmoil because the Holy Spirit is truly our power source for peace. So with these things in mind, let's look at John chapter 14 and we'll start in verse 25. These are Jesus' words. These are the last teachings of Jesus with His disciples. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you what is he talking about well we've talked about prayer we talked about the importance of obedience we talked about what true love is and we talked about trusting god in all situations in life and that's what jesus was telling the disciples then verse 26 but the helper and folks remember that word the helper that is the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name He will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance of all things that I have said to you. And that helper is the third person of the Trinity. We know God the Father created everything. We know God the Son, Jesus Christ, lived a perfect life and died for our sins. And now He is saying, I'm not going to leave you uh, as orphans, which we talked about uh, two weeks ago. He said, I will leave you a helper And a helper is one who comes along beside you. One who who guides you. One that if you will listen to uh, the Holy Spirit, He will give you the right answer every time. Folks, we make the Christian life really harder than it is. We can have the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can have Jesus in our lives. We can have God looking down on us. And if we will listen to the Holy Spirit we will make the right decision according to the Word of God. And it says it will teach us all things. When you go to school, what do you have to do? You have to read. You have to memorize things. And folks, I'm telling you, this thing we call life is a huge test. It is a test. And there are times when our tests are extremely hard. And I'm telling you, what we need to do is rely on the Word of God to pass these tests. And that's what he is saying. The key to learning 
is reading. And I'll tell you another key about the Word of God is memorizing Scripture. So when Satan comes at you, and folks, peace is not just the absence of fear. Some people just want to say, well, that's, that's what peace, peace and, and the absence of fear is the same thing. And, and it is, but it's more than that, folks. It's knowing God. It's having that peace that passes all understanding. It's Jesus sleeping in the boat in the storms of life. And folks, there are storms of life you cannot avoid. You are, and, and many times you're right in the middle of storms. And Jesus, with His power, said, Peace, be still. And folks, He can do the same thing to us through the person of the Holy Spirit. But folks, we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We have to talk to God and we have to meditate on His Word. His Word is the key to having peace in our lives. Turn to 2 Corinthians. I want you to see this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And Paul is talking about Christ, Christ's life, His epistle in these, in these uh, Scriptures. And really it comes down to God's wisdoms, God's wisdom versus man's accommodation. And folks, I'm telling you, I would rather be right with God than receive the praise of man. I would rather. And this is what Paul is speaking of. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or your letters of commendation to you. You are our epistle written in our hearts. Think about that. That's what the Word of God is. The disciples had Jesus' words ringing in their ears. They saw His life. They saw the miracles that He had did. And there was no doubt in their life that He was truly the Son of God and had the power of God on their lives. And we today, listen to me, Jesus is beside us in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. And if we want to know what Jesus thinks, we have to get into the Word of God. That's what the written epistles are for, so that we can know the Word of God. And we don't need to just stay in the New Testament, folks. We need to read the Bible from cover to cover and learn what the Bible says for us in these troubled times. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, not written with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Some people say, well, it was just a bunch of men. You know, it's just some men writing down words is what some people will tell you. Oh, folks, it was more than that. It was the Holy Spirit uh, inspiring men, writing down the words that God had spoken and that Jesus had spoken. It was divinely inspired, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the flesh. That is of the heart. Why do you think we say Jesus comes into your heart? Folks, you can know of Jesus in your mind. You can know about Jesus in your mind. You can know of the life of Jesus in your mind. But that's not enough. Jesus must be in your heart. And I'm telling you, there are people that are 12 inches from salvation. 12 inches. It's, it's from your head to your heart. And the Word of God will permeate your being if you will listen to the Word of God. That's what Paul is saying. And we have such trust, though, through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves. But our sufficiency is from God. Oh, listen, folks, it's God in the morning. It's God in the evening. It's God at noon. We need God every day of our lives who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. What was the new covenant? Folks, he covered that uh, in 1 Corinthians. He talked about the blood, His blood that was shed on the cross. He talked about His body that was broken for you and I. That new covenant, not the letter, but of the Spirit. 
how do I know where, where I should preach? I'm telling you, you know, just like coming up, you know, I'm, I'm already looking towards the end of John. And I'm thinking about going to Acts. Okay, the other thing I'm thinking about, because several people have said, what about the book of Revelation? Okay, and don't try to persuade me one way or another. Folks, when we finish with John, I will get in my office, I will get in my study, and I'll say, God, where are we going? Where are we going? If he says go to Acts, we're going to Acts. If he says go to Revelation, we're going to Revelation. Because folks, I'm not here to make you happy. I mean, I want you to be happy. Okay? I want you to smile. But I'm telling you, I listen to the Holy Spirit. And you, every day of your life, need to listen to to the Holy Spirit. Look at the rest of this. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. What is life? It's illumination of Scripture. What is life? It is salvation. What did Jesus say in John chapter 14? I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. And we have life in us because of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit comes inside of us at the point of salvation. So, with that in mind, I want you to see two things. One is in Psalm. Psalm 51, go with me. This is called personal peace. Let me tell you how you have personal peace. And You remember the text of what David was writing about. David did a horrible thing. Okay, He committed adultery and had a child out of wedlock. He also seen that the that Bathsheba's husband was murdered. So we are talking about the king of Israel doing these two things. And I'm telling you, for one year, he lived with that. And then in Psalm 51, he could not live with it anymore. Why? And I can tell you, when people ask, how do you know whether you're saved or not? Well, does sin bother you? Is there conviction of the Holy Spirit when you sin? And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit got all over David, and then he pins these words. And I wish I had time to go through all of them, but just pick up in verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Folks, he was saying, I know what the Spirit of God is. I've felt the presence of God in my life, but right now I am not feeling that. And again, don't just rely on feelings. It's because of faith. You are saved by faith, not by feelings. Faith in the Word of God. And David is crying out to God because he had sinned terribly against God. Do not cast me away from your presence, folks. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Some people want to interpret this as losing your salvation. Folks, we do not believe you can lose your salvation if you were truly saved. But for one year... David made peace with sin. David was not in communion with God. David was on his own living a lie. And all at once, the Holy Spirit got all over him. He confessed his sin. And in this Scripture, he is getting right with God. Folks, there's a difference between uh, a losing of the, your salvation and a manifestation of the Spirit. For instance, when I'm not right with God, the Spirit is not strong in my life. Okay? It's not. And that's what, where David was. He wasn't lost. Okay? He was simply away from God. And he was not listening to the Holy Spirit. And then it says, verse 12, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me by your generous Spirit. And folks, being right with God gives us peace in our lives. Being right with God gives us that peace that passes all understanding. And uphold me by your generous Spirit. So we see that we can have individual peace in our lives when we are at peace with God. And then Psalm 122. And the only reason, folks, I am telling you this one today, I wouldn't have gone there, but I am telling you, I believe Jesus is coming soon. I believe it. And I believe that we need to pray because the Word of God tells us to pray. Psalm 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for that. 
Folks, I'm telling you, uh, you know, the Jew is God's chosen people that they may prosper who love you, that peace may be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces for the sake of my brethren and companions. And now I say, peace be within you. How can you have peace? I mean, they have talked about, you know, World War III. They have talked about, you know, the atomic power that is there. We're t- they talked about, you know, all this stuff that can just blow things up. We've heard about missiles that can reach the United States. And I got news for you folks. I don't set up at night worrying about junk like that. Why? Because I have the peace of God in my life. Because I know whatever happens, God is going to be with me. And I'm telling you folks, the folks that mess with Israel, they're messing with the wrong country, folks. God's hand is on Israel and God's hand is on His people, which is not just them, it's we also as Christians. So it says, because the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Oh, listen to me, folks. You don't have to worry about the headlines. You don't have to worry about CNN or Fox or any news station. You don't have to read the paper to know things are bad. But folks, I can still have the peace of God in my personal life. And I can pray for world peace and especially peace for Jerusalem. So we see the gift of peace. The Holy Spirit teaches us. Number two, Jesus gives us peace. Man, this is some awesome Scripture. And Thurman did a super job singing that. Verse 27, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. Isn't it neat when somebody leaves you something? Just leaves you something, all right? I mean, you know, uh, you may have had somebody stay in your home and, and they leave a real nice note and, and you read that. And here's what Jesus is saying. Man, I'm not going to leave you, you know, without anything. I am going to leave you with peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. That means we can have peace in our lives. Folks, I'm telling you, we should not worry about all this stuff that is going on. God is in control. God knows what's going on. It's all going to be in His timing. It will all be in His will. It will all be in His way. And even historically at this time, He tried to tell the disciples, I told you a couple of weeks ago, 12 times in Scripture, he tried to tell them, guys, I'm not going to be here. Okay, I've got to go. I'm I'm, going to die. I'm going to die on a cross. But now the time had come. This time was just hours away. This time were just days, a few days away. And that's why he was telling them, this peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world uh, gives to you, I give to you. What does the world think about peace is? You know what a lot of people think? It's having money. If I just have money, I'll have peace in my life. Well, folks, I know some people that have a lot of money and they don't have peace in their life. You know what they worry about? Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? And I'm telling you, folks, money does not give you peace. Things think so. You know, I need a new house. I need a new truck. I need new golf clubs. I need new clothes. I need new. Folks, you're not going to find peace in that. All those things are going to melt away. You can find peace in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what he is saying. He says, my peace I leave you. My peace I give you. The world will tell you what peace is. And folks, he says, don't listen to the world. Look what it says. Let not your heart be troubled. What was the first verse in chapter 14? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. That is where you find peace. You find peace in a relationship. And that relationship is with God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit also. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. True peace, I am telling you, is having the peace of God and Jesus in your lives. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. 
If you love me, you would rejoice. But I said, I am going to my Father, and my Father is greater than I. During this time, the disciples, I'm just telling you, they'd asked him many times, why, why, why do you have to go, Jesus? Man, where are you going, Jesus? What are we supposed to do once you leave, Jesus? What are we supposed to do? For three and a half years, all they did was hang out with Jesus. So their world was being rocked. And folks, our, our world is being rocked today. I mean, you think of the mass shootings. Every day, these shootings are going on. And I'm telling you, the devil wants you to live in fear. But I refuse to live in fear. Why? Because I have the peace of God in my life. Because Jesus said it was going to be all right. Look at John 16, verse 32. John 16, 32. Indeed, the hour is coming, and yes, now has come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will uh, and, and will leave, leave me alone. He's saying, you're going to run. Okay, you're going to run for fear for your life. And yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Isn't that a great promise of God? We can have peace in our life because God in Jesus has overcome the world. True peace leads to joy and contentment. Joy. I mean, you, you can hear joy like in Luke chapter 15. You know what ha happens when someone gets saved down here? There is joy in heaven. And we should rejoice over that also. And contentment is being satisfied with who you are, and where you are in life. It's not things, okay? It's a relationship. True peace comes from knowing God and knowing Jesus Christ. That's what he is saying. Then Philippians 4. Go with me if you would. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Don't you love the people that when you do this? How you doing? Oh, I guess I'm okay. No, really, how you doing? Well, I, I'm treading water. I'm trying to survive. Don't you love to be around people like that? Negative Nancy. <laughs> All right. I'm telling you folks, those people, I, I'm not saying I avoid them, but I just don't hang around them very long because their attitude will rub off on you. Folks, I got news for you. Right now, I am as happy as can be. Why? I'm doing what God asked me to do. I'm preaching the Word of God. God has answered a prayer for us this week. Lori's surgery went really well. All things are good. Why should we worry? Why should we not be happy? I believe Christians ought to be the most happy and joyful people on the face of the earth. Why? Because we have the peace of God in our lives. And I'm telling you, when I go to bed at night, I'll talk to Lori, and, and she told me I did this uh, after we spent a night in the hospital, which you never get any rest in. She said, we were just talking along and all at once. And she said, I'm telling you, it wasn't five minutes. And folks, I think that one of the greatest, well, the greatest things is to know that you're saved to know that you're going to heaven. But do you know something else? Just as a Christian, to lay your head on the pillow at night and, and just say, you know what? It's all good. Doesn't matter what happened today. Doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. It's all good. I have the peace of God in my life. Verse 5, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious. That means worry. Do not worry about nothing or anything. Don't worry. But in everything, by prayer, Folks, prayer and peace is hooked up together. You want more peace in your life, you pray more. You pray more because we spend too much time worrying. Worrying's like a rocking chair. There's a lot of action, but you are getting nowhere. Replace worry with prayer. But be anxious for nothing but everything. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known 
unto God. He already knows, folks. But He wants you to say it. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Boy, you want the peace of God in your life. I'm telling you, pray to God. Quit worrying about things. Spend time in God's Word. Memorize God's Word. And folks, I'm telling you, that's why, and, and I've done, I don't even know how many funerals I've done in my lifetime. But there are funerals where it literally turns into a praise service. A praise and worship service. Why? Because we know where they are. We know about their relationship with God. We are happy. Matter of fact, if anything, I just envy those that are going. Why? Because I want to go too. I'm not worried about it. Death, death does not scare me. Death does not bother me. In the least. Why? Because number one, I know who my Lord is and I know where I'm going. And that's why he describes this as peace that passes all understanding. I have literally heard family members say, why aren't you upset? Why aren't you upset? Man, your loved one died. And what I want to say, and, and I do, I just quote Scripture from 2 uh, Corinthians 5 eight: to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, Christians are up in heaven kicking up goat dust right now as we talk. And that gives me that peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts do not let fear in do not let fear in and then look at verse 8 finally brethren here's thinking you what you think you will become whatever things are true are noble whatever things are just pure whatever things are lovely if there's good report if there's any virtue if there's any praise worthy meditate on these things think positive Think about things of God. Think about the good things. And I'm not going to go there because next week we're going to talk about the blessings of God. The things which you learned and received and heard. Man, listen to this sentence. The things that you learned, we learned from the Holy Spirit. We received from God and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. Oh, folks, everyone needs the peace of God in their lives third thing i want you to see the holy spirit teaches us peace jesus gives us peace that's a good present folks peace and number three god's formula for true peace look at verse 39 in our text verse excuse me 20 29 in our text verse 29 and now i've told you before uh it comes that when it does come to pass that you may believe I will no longer talk much with you for the rulers of this world is coming. He's predicting what is about to happen. And Judas has already sold him out. And he's just giving them a warning. We're fixing to be separated. We're not going to be with each other every day of our lives. For the rulers of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Folks, he's talking about the Roman leaders. He is talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. And you know what else he's talking about? He's talking about the devil himself, Satan. Folks, Satan wants to steal our peace. Satan wants to steal our joy. And Jesus is saying, don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me a commandment, so I do. What did he say his whole life? His whole three and a half years of ministry I have come simply to do the will of the Father. Do you know what will give you peace in your life? To be in the perfect will of God. Folks, there is no place like it. I knew when I came to Rye Hill, and folks, in February, it will be 15 years. I knew that I knew that this was God's will for my personal life. Oh, I'm just going to tell you folks, it wasn't easy at first. But God is blessed as we have prayed, as we have trusted, as we have knocked on doors, as God has grown our church. Three more joined last week. Folks, in the last year and one week, 104 people have joined Rye Hill Baptist Church. And folks, there is nothing like being 
in the center of God's will. It's the best feeling on earth. Oh, folks, I've hit grand slams in baseball. I've scored touchdowns in football. I've been on a state championship in basketball. In all of them, everything that i got now is rotten. Those trophies up in the ceiling, up in the attic, they're worthless. They're dirt and they're worthless. But knowing Christ is my personal Lord and Savior has changed everything. And it has given me the peace of God in my life. And that's what he's saying. And then the last, arise and let us go from here. Jesus is just saying, all right, you're going to walk with me to the garden. We're going to head out. I've got some more lessons, but we've got to leave this place right here. Let me give you God's formula for true peace. And uh, you can write these down if you choose to. Number one, begin each day in prayer. If you want peace in your life, you need to begin each day in prayer. That is communion with God. How do you know what you're supposed to do? How do you know His instructions if you're not talking to Him? If you're not reading His Word? If you're not praying to Him? Two, obey God's Word and study it. Obey. Obedience is a key to having peace in your life. Obey God and His Holy Word. Number three, Focus on God and not on circumstances. Focus on God and not on circumstances. You know what my Bible says? With God, all things are possible. My Bible says, and, and they, he wrote it a different way, with God, nothing is impossible. There's no such thing as an impossible situation with God. God can take care of it. God has healing power. God has spiritual power. God has any power that you need. He has the Holy Spirit power in our lives. Focus on God and not on circumstances. Number four, keep a positive attitude at all times. Keep a positive attitude at all times. Number five, realize that people are not the problem. Satan uses people, and God uses people, but I'm telling you folks, people is not your problem. Your problem is your relationship with God. You get close to God and it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You can have peace in the midst of a storm. So keep a positive attitude. Number five, overcome fear by faith and trust and prayer. Overcome fear by faith, trust, and prayer. Number six, realize that God is in control of all situations of life. Folks, we serve a sovereign God. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows the needs that you have. And you just have to depend on Him for everything. And then we have Romans chapter 12. One more scripture, and I close with this. Romans 12. Go with me if you would. Romans 12, verse 17. Repay no one. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Folks, just let God take care of things. When people do you wrong, when you feel like you've been slighted, just let God take care of it. He will do a better job than you. And then it says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, and it does depend on you, live peaceably with all men. If it is possible. To some people, they'll, they'll say, oh, you don't know my boss, or you don't know mine, and you can just fill in the blanks. Well, folks, you know what I say to that? I know my God. And my God says my, He is able. He is able. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it with the peace of God in my life. Let me ask you as we close, do you have true peace in your life? True peace. I'm talking about that peace that passes all understanding. And even a more important question, do you have Jesus Christ in your life? Jesus will give you peace. doesn't matter what's going on in your life. If you put your faith and your trust in Jesus, He can change your life. True peace is available for everyone. Father, thank You for this day. And God, I pray if there's one here that doesn't know You, 
God, I pray that they would just come forward and God, I pray that they would just put their whole trust in You. God, if they would just ask for forgiveness of their sins. God, if they would just confess their sins to You and repent in their heart. God, You tell them that You will save them. And God, I pray for true peace in our lives. If anyone needs to know You, if anyone needs to turn their life over to You, I pray that You would give them the courage to do it today. And then, Lord, I pray for the Christian. God, I just pray that they would realize that peace can be in our lives. God, I pray they quit worrying about stuff. God, You are the Prince of Peace. That is one of Your titles. And God, You and You alone can give us peace in our lives. So God, if others need to follow the Lord in baptism or want to join this church, uh, God, I just, I just pray, maybe, maybe a rededication of their life. They know You, but they just haven't been walking close to You. God, I pray that through the Holy Spirit, You would speak to them. God, this is Your time. This is Your church. You do with it what You choose. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?